welcome in today's devlog video for making a sonic game on the commander x16 8-bit platform we will take care of wrapping and water go through all of the details first then see them in action running the first build of the game as the previous devlog stated i put wrapping and water as number five on my list of rules absolutely required to make a sonic game correctly that video had examples of why those rules are needed we can therefore not survive making a sonic game without implementing them wrapping is boosted up to the top priority of things to implement because it is a complex system that other complex systems depend on we will put the water on the side burner for now and if we have the brains left to talk about it at the end we will talk about it then but before we can talk about wrapping we have to talk about the fundamental math operation that probably most of you already know about if you are a modern programmer this will definitely not be new to you 16-bit sonic games use this math operation and we will immediately struggle to use it for our 8-bit sonic it is part of the physics of how sonic operates it is of course the dot product i am making this complex because i don't want your brain to follow i will make it easier later so don't worry my brain won't be able to handle this either because we are in fact limited by the 3d world around us make a vector in your head it is represented by the relative distance between two points and it doesn't matter how far away they are from each other or in what direction the vector will end up pointing at oh and the two points are in four dimensional space that means they have coordinates on the x-axis y-axis z-axis and the w-axis because we take the difference of those coordinates to build a relative distance between the points we will end up with a four-dimensional vector i know you can still see this vector in your head that is not the stupidly difficult thing but we need another four-dimensional vector to perform the dot product between them use the first point but create a new point in 4d space and don't make it the same as the second point make a relative vector between those points and you will end up with two vectors facing away from each other from the first point if the dot product of those two vectors equals zero then those two vectors are exactly perpendicular to each other that means they are facing exactly 90 degrees away from each other this is true even in four dimensions even if our brains can't comprehend that dot product isn't limited to any dimension it is extremely versatile and used everywhere especially in 3d programming where you can't just survive with the simple trigonometry operations like sine cosine and tangent by the way sonic uses three trigonometric operations to function being sine cosine and the last one having a weird name arc tangent 2 since we are limited to 8-bit sine and cosines are easily implemented but we can't do arc tangent 2 because it has an implicit division operation in it to get both the slope and the direction and that is just impossible on an 8-bit cpu without division thankfully we can throw away arc tangent 2 because there are more accurate ways to handle sonic so back to dot product once you step up to three dimensions it is just simpler to skip trigonometry because dot product is versatile and it will solve many things for us so what is dot product you might have heard from other dev youtubers that it is a way to find similar vectors others might say it's used for hidden base determination oh this one is good dot product is used to calculate incoming light for your ray trace 3d engine did you know that NASA used dot product to get a man onto the moon? Your graphics card fundamental math operations are just dot products. Yep, I can go on here, but none of those actually explains what dot product is. Is it a magic spell or something? No, that's cross product you're thinking about, and forget about that one. Sonic doesn't need it. The dot product between two vectors in any dimension becomes the length of the first vector times the length of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between them. So the easy part is that cosine of the angle 90 degrees is zero. So if the vectors were perpendicular, you will end up with a multiplication of zero, which results in the entire operation being zero. Okay, no need for four dimensions anymore. We don't need three either. Sonic is a 2D game, so two dimensions are fine. Vectors are now just x-axis and y-axis, and a pen and paper can understand this concept. If you want the length of a vector, and we do, that is the length in pixel units, by the way, we will do Pythagoras' theorem, the one you were taught in school. 
it is the length of the first vector times the length of the first vector times the cosine of the angle between them being one since the angle is zero and multiplying by one is the same as not multiplying at all so it is dot product just that the second vector is the same as the first the result of that dot product is the first vector's length times the first vector's length times one which school says is the length squared to get the length of the vector is then to simply do square root. 16-bit Sonic doesn't do square root, and we won't either. Not only is it an expensive calculation, but it is the most expensive one. Anyways, now that you know of dot product, you absolutely must understand that when multiplying two values that have the same sign, like a minus sign, you will always get a positive result. Minus 7 times minus 7 equals 49, just like 7 times 7 equals 49. This is why every programmer today uses dot product to calculate hit tests and collision detections between objects, because only one check is required, and that's our aim for Sonic as well. We need to find if two objects are intersecting, and if so, do something about it. It is just a simple check. Is one object close enough to the other object so they are intersecting? We'll use the circle point intersection for simplicity. If the relative distance between the point and the center of the circle is less or equal than the radius of the circle, the point is intersecting with the circle. It is one check, less or equal. Make a relative vector between those points. Do dot product on that same vector, and since it is the same vector having the same angle, cosine will be one, and we will end up with the length squared. Since the order of the circle and the point can swap, the vector can also be negative. But as I stated earlier, multiplication of the same sign will yield a positive result. So only one check is needed. So, if the dot product of the relative vector between the center of the circle and the point is less or equal than the dot product of the radius of the circle, the point or the circle is in fact intersecting. And there you have it. Hit test with one single check completed. Just to clarify, the radius of the circle is a one-dimensional vector, so dot product still applies. Dot product doesn't care about how many dimensions, it only cares about the two vectors it is fed, and will yield a scalar result. Shocker! Dot product results in a scalar result, and requires multiplication, two things an 8-bit CPU can't do. The range of an 8-bit CPU is minus 128 to plus 127, 256 unique numbers. Also, the 65CO2 processor doesn't do multiplication or division. Shocker again. Wrapping can't be done with dot product. Wrapping is hard. Dot product is easy in comparison. Yet again, shocker. We can't do wrapping without division, so I will have to invent division in this very video. I'll invent division without using long division, because long division is horribly slow, even on pen and paper. If you want to try to solve this problem before I get to it, then go ahead. We'll need the result of a division between a 16-bit number and the constant 16-bit number 320. And what we are looking for is called the modulo. We are not interested in the quotient of the division, but we will get it anyways, since division works that way. It is time to leave dot product here, since we don't use it until it is time to transform a vector onto another vector like 16-bit Sonic does. We'll do that when it is time for the physics, which is the next devlog by the way. I believe that is rule number 6, and we are doing rule number 5 now. I hope you know what wrapping means. I mean, you have gotten this far, so I expect you to have seen it in a Sonic game before, or at least seen the previous devlog where it is being shown. We want to intersect two objects, but they might not share the same space in reality. They share the same space visually because either the screen or the level wrapped around. So we will call this phenomena wrapped space. No matter how far away the objects are from each other, they will still potentially intersect in wrapped space. We also don't want to waste cycles doing multiple intersections between the same objects, and we only want to do a single check that less or equal check previously mentioned in the circle and point intersection. No circles though, we will use a box instead of a circle. It's usually called hitbox in video games. They're kind of being an average of a circle or any other shape. We only care about the horizontal axis for now, but remember it is the same for vertical. 
it makes it a little bit easier to follow. If you have a box and you think of the radius of the box being the half width of the box and axis aligned, you basically don't need multiplication anymore. Units are just pixels now and not the scalar. Problem is the relative distance between the center of the box and the point, since they can easily swap side, and the distance can therefore be negative or positive. Now we need two checks instead of one. In math, the operation is called absolute. To make a value always be positive, and that requires a check. If the value is negative, then it needs to become positive. So if you have a value of minus 128, and you swap the sign, the value would become 128. But an 8-bit CPU will instead set the overflow status flag, make the value minus 128 into minus 128, and hope that didn't matter, or you didn't care. So instead, we don't care about negative values at all. If the distance between two objects are negative, we will treat that negative value as a higher value by not caring about the negative bit of the number. This doubles the range the 8-bit CPU can do, now operating in unsigned space of 0 to 255. This is not the same as an absolute value. If you want to subtract 1 from 0, you'll get minus 1. In unsigned space, the result become 255, the highest number that 8-bit can represent. There is one operation that can also get me to 255 from 0, and that is addition. I can add 255 to 0 and get 255. So why is it that I can subtract 1 from 0 and get minus 1, and I can add minus 1 to 0 and get minus 1? It is because subtract doesn't exist. You think it does, but minus 1 and 255 is the same number on an 8-bit number scale. You say you want minus 1, but the CPU thinks 255 instead. You say you do subtraction, but the CPU does addition instead. So a relative distance that is negative is actually a higher number that was wrapped around 0. When this happens, a status bit in the CPU called the carry flag is toggled, indicating that a borrow happened. This is our key to make this intersection test only one check and make it wrappable. By taking the distance between the center of the box and the point, and nudge that value over zero, the wrapping point, by adding the half width of the box to the distance, the first check ceased to exist because anything that was negative is now a higher number than the half width plus the half width. Wait, 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 why? This is like an equation where if you do something on one side of the equal sign, you have to compensate on the other side as well. We have already nudged the relative distance with half width of the box, so we must do the same on the value we're checking against. We'll end up with the one check if the nudged above zero distance between the center of the box and the point is less or equal to the nudged half width of the box, then there is an intersection on that axis. If the distance was below zero, but yet was within the half width of the box, it will end up above or equal to zero and less or equal to the now full width of the box. However, if the distance was below zero and further away than the half width of the box, won't wrap over to the positive side and stay out of range. That out of range number is a high number that is definitely higher than the now full width of the box, and the single check will not yield an intersection. In this single check is a hardware assist wrap, that being the high number, the either negative or positive distance being too high, that it wraps around the zero point. This is wrapping. We need to do this, but not for an 8-bit number of 255, but on a 16-bit number, non-power of 2 number, 320, the width of the screen, for horizontal screen wrapping support. And the only math operation that can do wrapping on that number is called modulo, and it is not free. It is not hardware assisted. Modulo is the result of a division of a remainder plus the divisor of the division. A mouthful and two division operations that are extremely costsome for an 8-bit computer to do. Also, the fact that the divisor 320 is a 16-bit number makes division operations very, very costsome. Using the compiler CC65's optimized 16-bit division operation to divide the number like 24,491 to get the remainder of 171 takes a whooping 656 cycles on the Commander X16, which is multiple scan lines of rendering the screen. I'm not gonna lie here, but I'm not fit to compete against the compiler, but I have no choice.
So let's take that same number, 24,491, but instead of doing a long division required if the divisor is any number but zero, act on the fact that a divisor of 320 is a constant and won't change. Do whatever it takes to scale the dividend down according to this number, so bit shifting the dividend 8 bits to the right or on an 8 bit CPU take the high byte, we get a value of 95. Remember that as a quotient of our division, bit shift it to the right by 2 bits to get the value 23, subtract that from 95 to get 72 for our quotient, then bit shift 23 right by 2 bits to get 5, add that to 72 to get 77 for our quotient, then bit shift 5 right by 2 bits to get 1, subtract it from 77 to get 76 for our quotient. We have now completed the high byte, and the low byte was never needed. We got the quotient of 76, which is the correct answer of our division. We don't need the quotient, but the remainder. So scale up 76 by 320 without using multiplication. Bit shift 76 left by 6 bits, which makes it a 16 bit number, 4864. And let 76 be the high byte of a 16 bit number to skip the expensive bit shift of 8 to the left which is 19,456. Add them together, which is the product of a multiplication the CPU couldn't do for us, which is 24,320. Subtract that from the original dividend of 24,491, and we will end up with 171, and this is the correct answer. And it only took 116 cycles to perform on the Commander X16, which again is slow, but I can work with that. To do wrapping, however, requires us to do the modulo 320, and that is not the same as the remainder of a division, so we must be able to do a sign division as well. I am writing the code right here in the video. It is worth mentioning that the sign division mirrors the quotient and remainder on negative numbers, and we definitely would hate to get the result of zero from a dividend range minus 1 to minus 319, where we expect minus 1 as the quotient. That shift to get a perfect grid is computed with a fast bitwise exclusive OR operation, and the remainder of a negative number implicitly removes that second division and gives us the modulo with just an addition, though it is calculated with an additional carry to make the code more clear. Okay, enough of math now. Let's start up the game I have been working on for a little while now. The Commander X16's kernel provides functions to load data, so I have gone ahead and drawn placeholder art and constructed a simple level. I cannot understate how fun it is to develop for the Commander X16. Low level programming with direct feedback just makes the time fly by. The main thing to look at here is the horizontal screen wrapping and how that affects the hit test between the sonic player and the moving ring, no matter how many screens they are traveling apart. Remember that the wrapping effect is a visual effect, where sonic and the ring may look like they are touching, but they might not be close to each other in reality. Oh, and did you notice the water? The Commander X16 has 256 palette entries, all being 12 bits, making a copy of the water palette mid-frame absolutely impossible. If you want to update the whole palette of 512 bytes per frame, that is the only thing you will end up having time for. That is how extremely impossible it's low to do stuff on the Commander X16. Like most game consoles that have DMA, direct memory access, to do these things, the Commander X16 does the opposite, designed to be simple and easy to program and thus leaves you to painstakingly having to step through each byte one at a time using the CPU until the operation is completed. So how can this water effect be achieved then? It is the hardware feature in the Vera ship where one bit of the background layer switches between 16 colors and 256 colors has the side effect of using the higher 8 palette lines instead of the lower 8 giving us half of the palette for over water and half for underwater palette. Therefore, a whole range of palettes for a huge amount of tiles are just swapped instantly by changing one bit of the layer configuration. That leaves all the sprites to be manually swapped to their water palette line, which is slow, but definitely less so than having to change every palette entry in the palettes. And I guess that is wrapping and water. For the next devlog video, we will tackle the physics of Sonic with the return of the dot product and get Sonic to run across a loop in the process. We will also implement the parallax scrolling, which means we will have to scroll levels as well. We'll see you next time and have fun until then. I'll certainly will.